Hey guys, Mitch at Swap Time. I want to show you the engine install on a square body. This is my personal 1976 C10. And we're using the original frame stands, new engine bushings. This, I believe this is called the clamshell, uh, the, the engine mount, that's the original two. And then I'm using a ICT billet, small block Chevy to Gen 5 adapter plate. I do trim the front of it. It's kind of a triangle piece that comes out. Just trimming off the bandsaw. And I'm using for really good clearance, using a 2020 and up new buy style Gen 5 oil pan. I have the part number on my website. Tons of room there. So you can see the clearance there, and we'll look at a factory oil pan down here. And you see how fat it is, huge difference. And then this is a swap pan, a Holly swap pan. That thing's dead flat, but they're very expensive right now. So this pan's $180, it's so not too bad. Easy change out. Here's another view. These are sold by Jags, Summit, Holly, whatever. These are the LT cast iron manifolds. So we have great clearance everywhere. And then we modded the factory cross member to fit because you, you, you'll, you'll want to tilt your engine to clear your tunnel. So the closest tunnel clearance is right where the tunnel meets your transmission at the very back. So I just dialed that in and use a standard, uh, like a turbo 350 uh, transmission mount. It actually came with the bushings for like $25 off eBay. You get the bushings and the transmission bushing as well. You want all rubber. Do not use polyurethanes. They're too firm and it'll just cause too much vibration. Trying to think of anything else I need to go over. Um, since we pulled the front clip off, it was really easy to do this. I used uh, my brother at Venata Fabrication. I used his uh, delete panel, AC delete. I just have it mocked in for now with a few self tappers. I'm going to get a AC bulkhead right here. Um, I'm not going to do it here because I'm, I want you to leave the factory kick panel in the flap, all that alone. So this is going to come out here. No problem there. But this is the way I like doing these. There's good clearance everywhere. Um, this is a 2020 AC compressor off a of new buy style. It uses an LS3 adapter. It shoots the lines out straight forward. The factory compressor is tilted. Tilted down a bit. And it has a uh, another fitting on there, so that doesn't work so good. The 2020 ups, I gave them used off eBay for like eighty dollars. <laughs> Throw them on there. Works very nice. Next, we got this is my swap time drive. So very simple, lots of clearance, brand new power steering pump, and I'm using. I have a couple different pulley options on a uh, street applications. I'm using the Corvette pulley. That will slow the pump speed down a little bit so you're not making excess pressure. This one, the wheels were super easy to turn with the uh, five inch pulley. I got a six inch pulley on there now. See how that does. Uh, one thing to look out for is your booster to cylinder head clearance. Pretty tight. It's so tight, I haven't quite figured out what I want to do to put the factory covers back on. I really don't want to remove the booster. It's not a big deal. I could just, I think I just remove the four, four nuts. Maybe I'll pull out and out of the way enough to, to put that on. This is a stock 5.3 2015 with an eight speed transmission. So there's the uh, cam motor over there. 
I want a stock engine for daily driving and stuff like that. So went this route. I'm selling the, the camp one if anyone's interested in it. I'm going to go to LS Fest in Texas, so we're prepping this. Um, here's the wiring, factory wiring here. We just moved it up there. Um, I got a few things to button up. Got my C10 shift kit on there, the flexible cable. So it's mounted there. This was my prototype before, so I put my new brackets on. They're laser cut out of aluminum. So it's really easy to actuate. Then it's out, out of the way of your exhaust and things like that. So we got that. I did a, a separate video. I'll do a YouTube short on how to do this uh, vacuum hose, how to put this fitting. It has all the part numbers and pieces for that. Um, this is a truck intake stock uh, LED3. So I'm gonna play around with this a little bit. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to see how it performs with the truck LE3, then do a truck 62, and then do an LT2 intake, and just see if I notice any big differences for daily driving. It's a little tricky when you go to a bigger throttle body; it moves more air more quickly, so it feel more powerful, but it might not necessarily be as powerful. All right. Well, I'll go over that. Here's the clearance to your uh, back of your cylinder head. Put about three fingers behind the cylinder head. Just right. That way you still get tools back here. You get to build housing bolts. With the other way I had it installed with my custom mounts, this engine was slammed at least three inches lower because I had pedal stools that mounted here with little pucks. And that the whole thing came down three inches. And I had a ton of transmission um, clearance back there but it that doesn't help other people so I want to go back to how we've done other swaps in the easiest way to do these so I went back to OEM on that we got a uh, my brackets laser cut cut uh, with special bushings so we'll get that done the power steering hose I made it from here to there and the straight fittings I got were 5 eighths and not dash 6. So that's a little annoying. It, they were for dash 6 line, but it ended up being 5 eighths fittings. So I got order the correct ones, dash 6 to dash 6 fittings. And then that's done. What's cool about installing your engine with the accessory drive and your power steering lines all hooked up, you just drop the clip on and hook up your coolant, cooling system and you're done. You're ready to drive. So you can get a long ways with that front clip off and get everything, uh, pretty much everything done. So I'll probably mock up my AC hose, get a rough length coming from, I have to look at the diagrams and stuff to see how I wanna do my hoses there. But super excited to get uh, AC going on this and heat and just have it work like a complete vehicle. Well guys, let me know if you have any questions about the engine installation again it's pretty simple highly recommend this combination the uh, cast iron manifolds leak free design good clearance the factory gen 5 truck manifolds do not have good clearance they hit your frame so you have to cut your frame so these are about 300 something dollars three to four hundred dollars depending on where you go and then your uh plates adapter plates are like sixty dollars so good way to go and just modify your factory cross member if you can't do it uh, maybe talk to the local exhaust shop usually they can uh, fabricate uh, or modify your your factory cross member for you one last thing while we're here you get the lights right down there is the hole I made to run my harness through so you can see it's more towards the bottom shoots up and everything is nice and clean and protected. And that's pretty much it. I don't want to go into the fuel system, but that's how to get the engine installed. Uh, more of a factory way.
All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.